Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome to your second animator tutorial. Last time we talked about the value animator and we're going to continue with that this time but we're going to modify it a little bit. So the last time essentially we got the animate value. Now we're going to show you a little trick. We're going to get rid of this int here, okay? What we can do is we can say float fraction equals animator or animation dot get animate fraction. So essentially what the animators actually do is they animate from 0 to 1 in a float with a fraction and that tells you how far along it's gone. So let's see what that brings up. Right? So essentially what happens is the last time we animated from 0 to 100 and we just got the value out. And the animation the animator done the calculation for us. But we can actually use this uh, fraction value to calculate whatever we want. And you can do some really neat stuff with this. So anyway, let's run this again and we'll see. It'll actually go from value and be like 0 point and a big load of decimal places all the way up to 1.0 is what we should see. Do you see that? The way the uh, animator ran and it went from 0 to 1. Very nice. Let's just slow it down a little bit. So we'll put it up to 8 seconds so you can see what's actually happening here. So as you can see, see the way it's rising the value constantly. Now it's flicking very, very fast. But you can see the way it is animating up beautifully. So that's essentially what we're going to use now. We're going to power something using this fraction. So we know exactly how far the fraction is. Let's say we want to animate from a value to a value. Now we could use the of int here. But let's not use that. In fact, let's get rid of this of int and just say new value animator okay so now we don't have any ints at all we just get the fraction so basically telling it we'll handle the updates ourselves so in here we can actually do a little bit of calculation in fact we'll put our ints up here we'll, we'll assign our variables at the, at the start so you can say int start equals 0 end equals 200 okay now our fractions go from 0 to 1. So if we multiply, we get a we need to get a float. Or we'll actually use int position. Okay. Equals our end value times our fraction. And we have to cast all of this to an int because when you multiply a float by an int, you get a float. That's me tapping the fucking Windows key by accident, so cast to an int. So essentially what we're doing is here, we're manually calculating the position each time. So we're, we don't even need the start variable. We know it goes from 200, or we know it goes from 0 to 200. So when the fraction comes in, it gets multiplied by that. So 200 times 0 is 0. Our position is 0. 200 by 0 0.1 becomes 20. There's our second position, or whatever the position is. So we can use that to set the text. And we'll run this again. Hmm. For some reason it crashed. You know, what happened there, I wonder? Let's take a quick look at the log, see what comes up. Okay, so we can't actually say new value animator. Let's just do that. We just say zero of int zero one. You can't initiate a value animator directly. And as you can see, now it's scrolling up very nicely to 200 over 8 seconds. 
Now you notice how the animation actually slowed down. We'll talk about that in a second, but that's all we're doing there is we're just figuring out where we are using our fraction, doing a little bit of maths and figuring out where our end is. Now, if you think about this, this fraction value from zero to one, this update method is incredibly powerful. Think about that. You've, you know exactly where you are. You can use this fraction to figure out anything. You can figure out how to move a text view around the screen. You can figure out timers. You can, you can use this for timing, which I have before, and it's amazing because you can add an ending listener, but you can do all kinds of really, really cool stuff. In fact, let's, let's do even more cooler stuff with this. Let's add a button. Okay, so just add a button and yep, new button. Doesn't matter about that, ID button, okay? And we'll get a reference to our button very quickly. So, button, button, R equals uh, button. New on click listener. So very quickly, quick and dirty way setting up a click on a button. Let's have a little bit more fun. Let's take our value animator. And what we'll do is every time the value animator comes around, every time we tap this button, we'll add a second onto the value animator and we'll see how that happens, okay? So in the on click, we want to get int, current time by the way all the um, times in Android in general are based on current playtime oh that's a long huh. they're all based on milliseconds so that's something to look in or something to know about so 1000 is 1000 milliseconds is a second so essentially, whenever we click the button, we'll get the current play time, we'll add one second to it, and then we'll set the animator's position, set current play time to our new time. So essentially, every time the button is, it's going to get the current position, add a second, and then reset. So as this is animating, we'll be actually able to click this button, and it will push the animation back to the start. Okay, so it's animating up. Okay, that actually uh, was wrong. The animation goes from zero to eight thousand, and each time I clicked it, clicked it, it was actually pushing the animation forward. We want to reverse that, so we want to take time away. So it's going from zero to eight thousand. We want to take time away, so it reverses. Now, of course, that's going into negative numbers. So we went a bit under overboard there with that, but as you can see, we're able to actually push the animation forward and backwards using buttons. And that's a really cool property, this uh, set current playtime. It's very useful. But this whole animator framework is truly fantastic. Now we're animating from 0 to 200. Let's reverse it. Let's, let's try a little bit more fun. So see the way we got our fraction? If we take that fraction away from 1, So if we take one away our fraction, and we use, that's our inverted fraction, so this fraction will be animated from one to zero. And we run it again, you'll see this will actually count down now. You'll actually watch the animation go in reverse, essentially is what we're doing here. So really the animator, we're only using it as a timer, and then we're manually applying the values to it. And as you can see, it's going down. Now it's using uh, a time interpolator, We'll talk about those in the next video, guys. But I hope you enjoyed the second part of Value Animators. And next time we'll talk about time interpolation.